WrestleMania 34. This match right here, this was one of the matches of the night. <laughs> there was a lot of doubts. And, you know, it's understandable. After all, it was Ronda's very first WWE match. And Stephanie McMahon, okay, she is an in-ring competitor, but the thing is, is that her matches, they're far in between. But this right here, this was impressive. I mean, Ronda literally looked like she had been doing this for years. There was a lot of good chain wrestling. Like, she was putting all these moves on, not just Stephanie McMahon, but on Triple H. <laughs> like, she almost made him tap out. And Kurt Angle, the man still has a lot left. He, gosh, these two were a match made in heaven. Of course, these two do, did pull up the upset, right? Ronda ended up, ended up making up. Stephanie McMahon tap out with the arm bar. And that was it, of course. Really impressed. I have to say, Ronda Rousey, she's got a bright future ahead of her for sure. Now, the kickoff show. Cruiserweight title. We had Cedric Alexander against Mustafa Ali. The match was okay. Really nothing grand. Nothing stood out to me to call this match, you know, like, worthy of. Or even, you know, on the, on the main show. Still, of course, we all knew, right, that... Cedric Alexander was going to go in there to pick up the victory. Because, I mean, it was already supposed to happen a couple months back. Now, the very first women's battle royale, the last two participants. This was confusing to me, right? Because I thought that Sasha Banks and... Uh, Bailey were I thought that was it right I thought these were the last two but Naomi right well here's the thing so, or Bailey ended up taking out the boss she ended up eliminating and we all thought that she had won but next thing you know Naomi pops out to be to come our become our very first women battle royale so congratulations to you Naomi I don't know I think it, they could have gone with a better finish congratulations regardless love you know her character but come on like <laughs> she literally came out of nowhere, right? So, again, it, that was confusing to me. Now, for the Andre the Giant Memorial, Matt Hardy and Baron Corbin, they were the last two participants. But Bray Wyatt, he ended up showing up towards the end. And it was for mainly, you know, to distract um, Baron Corbin. He caught, he did enough distraction to, you know, to cost Baron Corbin the match. I mean, for a second, it did look that he was gonna, like he was going to win this for the second time in a row. Well, not in a row, but he has won it in the past. But this is cool. And, and the reason why I'm actually enjoying this is because we all know the type of character Matt Hardy is, right? <laughs> like, I can see him throwing some great promos here in the next month or two. So he's going to be carrying this around. He's going to be talking to the statue like it's his best friend. And Bray Wyatt, yes, it's a safe assumption that he's officially woken. Now, Right here, the uh, tag team match. I want to talk about the tag team match between Shane O'Mac, Daniel Bryan against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. From the get go, they did take out uh, Daniel Bryan. They attacked him like towards the beginning of the match. They came through the crowd instead of you know through the entrance stage, and they just oh, they completely destroyed him. They gave him this nasty power bomb off the off the apron right there and yeah he ended up getting put on the stretcher and they carried him out and we all thought that was it for daniel bryan right and we will find out we'll find out what ends up happening I, I gotta say i was a really big fan of this match shane mcmahon he was fighting with injury he has a hernia at the moment but oh gosh it did not look well i mean he was holding his gut the entire time but he was still going out there delivering as he would have for any other match right so really awesome he did this awesome move the one thing that really stood on the match he had uh sammy zane he was hanging from uh, the corner of the turnbuckle and he went coast to coast with that hernia wow <laughs> okay i thought that was it right and next thing you know like well these two ended up teaming up on shano next thing you know daniel bryan comes out yes 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 he goes back and forth on both of them and daniel bryan ends up winning the match by submission this match is really good i most pro i was probably have to say my second favorite match of the night for sure really great match for sure now speak since we're talking about the tag team match let's talk about the smackdown tag team division right and this this was a quick one i was actually quite shocked right as we all know the bludgeon brothers they've um They've basically been coming out for the last couple of months and having like two, three minute matches, right? I didn't see this with like main card level because the guys that they've actually been competing against, it, I'm not even going to call them jobbers because actually jobbers have more credibility than the hometown heroes. <laughs> but they treated these guys literally like hometown heroes. They went through the Usos and the New Day like nothing. And I am pretty excited to see what they're going to do with these guys because these guys are awesome. I mean, they, they're a great team. They have been for years. So when they repackage them this is what i wanted to you know for wwe to do with them so pretty excited it's nice to see a new face in the smackdown tag team division now the u.s title oh sorry i want to talk about the john cena thing so john cena he was uh he was in, in the crowd for 
a good portion of the uh, pay per view. He was he was like he was acting as a fan, and then next thing you know, someone comes up to him, starts whispering in his ear, t- telling him that there was somebody backstage. So John Cena quickly runs backstage, throws on his in ring attire, and we all thought that it was going to be the Dead Man. No, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> and uh, yep, come on, we all know that this was going to be his spot, right? He didn't have a match. The Drifter Elias. He's like, what'd you guys think? You guys thought it was going to be somebody else. And, you know, it was it was just a really just just a match. It wasn't even a match. It was just him just stomping all over Elias. And come on, WWE, you guys got to stop doing that to the poor man. So he quickly ran through him. And then we hear, well, first we saw a lightning bolt. And, of course, the Undertaker finally answered. And I thought this was just going to be like a... Like a promo, I didn't think that it was going to be an actual match. It actually kind of wasn't. I mean, it was. You know, there was a one, two, three, but it was kind of like one. I think a total of five minutes. It was a total of five minutes in all. The Undertaker came out. He had his quick match with with John Cena. It was just him basically burying Cena, right? Choke slam, tombstone, and we called it a night. It was kind of disappointing that it was a quick one, but it was still nice to see The Undertaker back at WrestleMania. Really happy with with his overall appearance. I I do think that he might be coming, you know, um, they're going to throw him into the upcoming pay-per-view, so we'll see if this feud continues. So, pretty interested to see uh, Undertaker, because he has been training. I mean, the man is still in decent shape. He's actually in better shape this year than he was against when he took on Roman Reigns. Now, the U.S. title, we have Bobby Roode, Jinder Mahal, Randy Orton, and Rusev Day. Now, Randy Orton, right, we thought that he was going to retain. Nope, uh, there was enough people in the sidelines, you know, one of them being Sun Eel. Sun Eel, he, yeah, okay. If you were to, okay, if you were to ask me which guys delivered more in this match, I would have to say Bobby Roode and Randy Orton. These two were like the main guys of the match. I think all in all, I think there was a total of five, maybe even six RKOs delivered by Randy Orton. But again, Sunil was there for the distraction, and of course, we have the new. We all know that this was going to happen. Come on, Vinny loves he loves Jinder Mahal, right? So here is your new U.S. champion, Jinder Mahal. All thanks to his trusty sidekick. That's what I'm going to call him. <laughs> Sonny, you're officially a sidekick. Now, the women's match, the Raw women's match, we have Alexa Bliss and, yes, Alexa Bliss taking on Nia Jax. Now, see, Nia Jax, she was concerned, right, because Mickey James was out there. So what she did right off the get-go, she wanted to eliminate Mickey James out of the equation. So before the match even started, she literally destroyed Mickey James. She ended up giving her this nasty Samoan drop on the outside. Yeah, they quickly took her back. <laughs> it didn't take much to eliminate her from the equation. Now right here, it came down to these two, and this was actually a decent match. I had to say they put on a great show. But at the end of the night, it was the powerhouse of Nia Jax that ended up pulling out the upset. She she went to the top rope, and she gave her this just, oh, man, she was all about the Samoan drops that night. That's it. From the top turbo. Actually, it was like from the second rope. But our new Raw Women's Champion, Nia Jax. Gosh, do I love this figure. <laughs> I love seeing this belt on this figure. So really cool. Now, since we're talking about the women's um tag team division this match was a surprise i think it was a surprise for me as it was for everybody else i don't think anybody saw this coming uh charlotte retained <laughs> and i know you're saying are you serious are you serious here fakes i am uh she retained the title i i still can't believe it um geez her streak is over it, it is over and this was probably the biggest swerve by wwe so i mean we are gonna get a rematch we know that you know it's gonna happen probably uh, backlash next pay-per-view because it's supposed to be a smackdown and raw pay-per-view so we'll see we're, we'll see what ends up happening with this right here now next up I want to talk about this match. This match was kind of, it was sad. Uh, well, I mean, the match was good. And what I mean by sad was the overall ending. All right. AJ Styles did retain. The ending was sad. Oh, like, these guys have so much history together, you know, being good friends. Um, not just in WWE, but over in Japan. AJ Styles won clean. You know, he uh, he went for the Kinshasa, but AJ countered. One, two, three, right? And Shinsuke Nakamura, he got down on his knee, and he was about to hand him. Well, actually, he was handing him the title. And uh, while he was down there, he pulled a, a nasty one. He gave him a low blow. AJ was hurt. He, he was hurt, and he ended up going to the outside. Another Kinshasa outside the ring. Like, come on, dude. We got an official heel turn from Shinsuke Nakamura. So, 
Jeez, and there's no doubt this is going to continue for sure. I mean, this is not the end. This is their first WWE match. So I guess we'll see where the feud goes for me. It just, man, it breaks my heart. <laughs> like, oh, seeing Shinsuke Nakamura turning heel on us. I, I don't know if I like that, guys. Now, the IC title. We have Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, and The Miz. Now, see, when he came out, when Finn Balor came out in his non-demon tire, I automatically took him out as a possible uh, potential winner. I'm sorry, dude, and I hate to put you out like that, but if it's a pay-per-view and if you're not bringing that demon attire, that's basically making it clear as to who was going to win, right? And it wasn't The Miz. It was, Miz was not going to retain... Seth Rollins had just a really good curb stomp game that night. Like, he was curb stomp city. <laughs> he got the Miz. He got Balor. We have the new IC title. I thought we were going to have uh, two-thirds of the Shield win the title. Uh, hold on. That's a spoiler. I'm not going to I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, well, I will. I will get into that. Uh, just, I, I got to say, this match right here, probably my third, second or third match. Jeez, uh, that Ronda match. I still, <laughs> I'm st it still blows my mind. Um. We're right here, you guys, and I don't know if it was supposed to happen. Well, actually, before I talk about the Universal title, I want to talk about the SmackDown match. This was confusing. So, Sheamus and Cesaro, they had come out, right, and they were waiting for to find out who was going to be the tag team partner. Guess who... Uh, Guess who Braun Strowman chose? This uh, this does this is crazy, and I can't believe this actually happened. But so Braun Strowman had gone in the crowd, right? And he was trying to look for uh, a fan. Uh, he was trying to find any random fan. He found this ten-year-old kid. Uh, I think his name was Nicholas, and he was probably a little bit taller than this figure, but. <laughs> So Nicholas, he stood on the side of the apron over here, pretty much the entire match. He was just hanging out right here. He was scared for his dear life. He literally thought that he was going to get hurt. But Braun Strowman, he took care of both, right? Both of these gentlemen got these hands to become, well, I don't know if it's the first, because obviously he did have a tag team partner, but Braun Strowman and Nicholas, a <laughs> 10-year-old, oh man, I don't think he's going to be able to go to school tomorrow. <laughs> he's going to have to defend those ta tag titles come Monday. So a lot of questions still as to what's actually going to happen with Nicholas or her, who's going to be his actual partner, right? Because we all know that a 10-year-old can't come in night in and night out. I mean, he could, right? Because after all, Baron Cor or Braun Strowman would be taking care of business all on his own, but still. It was quite interesting, to say the least. <laughs> the universal title, uh, Roman Reigns against Braun Strowman, or Brock Lesnar. Sorry, I'm still tripping about that Braun Strowman match. <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, this match right here, it was uh, uh, it was dull. Uh, it was very, very dull. The crowd was letting them know. Oh, geez. It got to the point where Brock Lesnar had to do something. He had to do something bad. He just went to town on him. I mean, he just opened him up, and he was covered in his own Samoan blood. Oh, my gosh, you guys. It was nasty. That that elbow shot at the end of the match. And, geez, I thought that Roman Reigns was going to get it, right? He stood up, and he was angry, right? And he just went for it. He went for a couple of spears. One, two, nope. Brock still kicked out. And he retained the title, which blows my mind because, you know, we all know that um, he's going over to UFC. So, like, what's going to happen with this universal title, right? There's a lot of questions, right? I mean, is he going to end up staying? Was it just a, you know, like a quick swerve from WWE to, to say, hey, look, Brock's still going to be with WWE? I don't know. There's a lot of questions. Or are they going to have some kind of tournament to determine the universal champion, right? Because eventually he will come back and he'll say, like, look, you guys, I never lost the title. You know, I want my match. I want my... Uh, so, again, a lot of questions, and we'll find out come tomorrow, but as of right now, as of right now, by the time of the filming of the video, nothing has changed, and still, Universal Champion, the Beast, Brock Lesnar. Drop it in the comment section, let me know which match you enjoyed the most, and we'll see you on the next one.